Good evening and welcome to the studio this evening and in tonight's show. <laughs> oh dear, I am I still am really tempted to say that all the time. Uh, and I guess that just means I just did. But anyway. Uh, right. So, rings. Try something different. Sort of different. Similarly different. I want to try out an idea that I had. So I'm going to get out some of these rings. Some of them. We'll try a few um, a few units and we'll see how it looks. And if it works I may make it into a bracelet. If it doesn't work then I'll stop. We'll have some of these. That'll do for the moment. We'll have, I think I'm going to have some purple. So, silver and purple. Whether that's a good combination or not, I don't know, but we'll find out. So, let me just get rid of that. And unfortunately, this is a slightly different purple. Hmm. That is one of the problems with rings. They are slightly different. Uh, different batteries can have slightly different colours. So, I've got a, a lighter purple. Hmm. I'm now questioning whether I want to do purple. Hmm. Orange and yellow. Green, royal blue. Even the red's a slightly different colour. Okay. What does it look like with I'm gonna try yellow that looks kind of nice so I shall put these purple back and I need to put those purple back and swap them for yellow Microphone's really sensitive, isn't it? Hopefully, it's not picking up too much background noise. I haven't used yellow before, but I quite like that colour. Swap glasses. Okay, that's just the lighting. I was looking at these yellow rings then, and they look like they've been made out of square wire rather than round wire. Um, but it's just the lighting. Interesting effect, but just the lighting. So, what I'm going to do actually is open these. Some of these rings I could close, um, but as I'm just experimenting, what I'm just going to do is open a few. And then we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try a box chain. Well, I could do a box chain, but I'm going to try. Uh, a different way of doing a box chain. I'm going to try out a little uh, thing I've been thinking about for a while. Uh, design. And just see whether it works or not. Sort of been imagining it and imagining how I can actually create the design I'm after uh, for a little while. I'm going to 
do is create a rectangular box chain here rather than a square one. So I guess whilst opening rings isn't perhaps the most fascinating thing to watch, it is actually quite um, fun to do. So that's some silver ones opened, let's open some yellow ones and then we'll do the slightly larger rings. I do quite like this yellow colour. Which in some ways is a bit of a silly statement, because if I didn't like it, I wouldn't be using it. Right, well, I'm not been counting these out, so I have no idea if I've got the, uh, uh, an appropriate number, and I certainly don't have enough out to make a bracelet. So, if this works, then I will have to get some more out, but we'll deal with that when it happens. If you're watching, haven't seen uh, chain mail before. Chain mail is the technique, so it's not ju it's not jewelry and it's not armor. It is the technique of of weaving rings together, which is what I'm doing. Um, to do that, you need to increase well, basically open the rings so that you can slot them together, and then close up the gap. Well, that's what I'm doing at the moment is opening the rings. I'm using a tool to help me do that. It's a little bit quicker to use this tool than it is to use two pairs of pliers. So this this is an opening ring. It just holds the ring in place because all I'm doing is twisting. I don't need to uh, I don't need to hold it solid or anything like that. I can just twist against the uh, the edge. So it makes uh, the process slightly quicker uh, and a little bit uh, easier to do. Effectively, all I'm going to do is I'm not using a I'm using a stamp. Going to be using a standard weave called a box weave. It's just the pattern of the colours that's going to uh, to differ.
There is no sort of standard pattern either. This is just uh, use whatever colours you like, how you like, and where you like. But um, I'm going to try them in a specific order. Right, okay, and I'll do I'll do a few more. I might as well finish off this pile and then we'll have a go at weaving them together. Um yes I've got a bit of wire. So this won't take too long. Not seen this before. These are aluminium rings, uh, anodized aluminium. So uh, one of the things that means is that they won't tarnish. They're not sterling silver, so they don't go grey or, or black like sterling silver would. And they're not silver plated, um, so the silver plating doesn't wear, won't wear off. Anodizing is kind of a dyeing process. Uh, it dyes the metal. Uh, it dies the surface, so it will scratch off, but um, it does take a little bit of scratching. Okay, I want a little bit of wire here, so um, having done that, I'm going to actually... Having opened the, these rings, I'm going to close two of them. And these will be my two starting rings. Actually, I want a yellow one as well to start with. Now this pattern is completely in my head, so I've got to sort of try and work it out as I go along. Let's see. So this bit of twist is just there, just to hold them in place. So what do I want to do? I want to take... silver through there and that one's going to wrap that way um, No, that wants to be on the other side. Okay, so I want the yellow one on this side. Having to think about here how the uh, the rings fold back on themselves and weave together. Once I get the first couple or three rows in, I should be okay because it'll just be a repeating pattern, but. Um, in the first coupling. Fantastic. Right. So 
So that's that, that's that. So if I'm going to do that, if I'm doing this right, that, that, I think I want a silver one. There. And a gold one opposite it, which is on this side. And I keep I probably will keep saying gold, but these aren't actually gold, they're yellow. Now that 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 probably means now that they Silver one will go on this side, and the gold one will go on the other side. Now, I know you can actually see what side I'm talking about, but I know in my mind which it is that I'm talking about. So that's silver, and that's gold. And again, I'm doing it, it's not gold, it's yellow. That's starting to do what I wanted it to do. That, that, that. Yes, it is. Okay, you'll see this a lot better once I get a bit further in to this. Uh, but I'm starting to, I am seeing the pattern I was looking for. And now it should be just a case of, as they say, rinse and repeat. Quite why you'd want to keep rinsing something, I'm not sure, but I suppose you'd want to do it once or twice. And I just have to be careful I don't intertwine the rings in a way I didn't intend them to. So as I mentioned, this is this is just a what they call a box weave. So it's, it's a fairly I will, can describe it as a simple weave, but it's um, it's a fairly common weave. Um, it, along with Byzantine, is one that you quite often <laughs> will see in jewellery. Uh, and it is it is quite popular for jewellery. It provides a, quite a solid looking uh, bracelet or necklace. Leopard Gecko Bios, good evening. <laughs> oh, that's a hard one to say. Is this my job? No, I would love it to be my job, but it's not, unfortunately. I work in telecommunications. Um, not uh, not jewellery making. I would love, as I say, to be able to do this uh, full time. But it's not possible at the moment.
if you uh, want to help me towards that goal you're quite welcome um, to take a look in the shop <laughs> uh, or uh, on uh, eBay if um, if Moobot will actually put the link up into uh, into chat what do you think because I can never remember what the command is for Moobot oh yes that's one <laughs> there we go um, but, uh, so like any other shop I do advertising as well <laughs> But no, I'm just. This is this is a hobby at the moment. I do sell stuff, as uh, as you can see. But um, it is it is. Un well, I'll say unfortunately because I kind of like it to be a job. But um, uh, it's uh, it is just a hobby. Right, um, yellow one on this side. So it's it's having fun. I'm having fun with the. Uh, with chainmail and and the other things that I do as well. I'm just having a change at the moment. I've been doing a lot of pyrography. So that's on that side. Yeah, that's that side. And that's this side. When I get a little bit further along on this, it should become a little bit more clearer what it is that I'm actually uh, trying to achieve. But with it being such a small piece at the moment, it's a bit hard to see. Uh, yeah, this side. Um, is it hard to master? It really depends on the techniques that you're interested in using. Um, leopard gecko bios. Um, learn to use fine. It, it's it's <sighs> pyrography literally translates as fire writing. Um, but as I usually say, I very rarely write and I don't use fire. Um, I tend to translate it more as drawing with heat or painting with heat. Um, and we don't, whilst pyrography can be done with open flames and people use blow torches and acetylene torches, I use electrically heated wire based tools like this. Um, and this this heats up um, generally uh, not I mean it doesn't even glow so it's, it's not as hot as as things like that but it does get uh, to a few hundred degrees and that's enough to uh, to to affect the wood and the what again whilst it's called fire uh, or people call it wood burning it's more a process of actually cooking the wood which turns it uh, dark now if you if you just go for sort of black and white work then it's basically the same as um, drawing with a pencil you know how good can you draw with a pencil uh, and if you're literally going for black and white you can use it just like you would do an ink pen and if you can draw with an ink pen you can draw with a pyrography tool if um, if you're more interested in doing um, uh, shading technique so look make it look more like a photograph and then that takes practice uh, to be able to get the right um, shades of color that you're after uh, and how to make it look smooth and things like that but now it's uh, generally speaking you can make a start 
uh, in it fairly easily um, and without needing extensive level of skill and then you just build on top of that very much like if you took a pencil and started drawing on paper it's a similar sort of idea you know you can make you can make lines and as you get better you start to use the pencil on its side and start shading or using cross hatching and things like that so um, the answer is kind of yes and no <laughs> Exilian, good evening and welcome to the studio this evening. How are you tonight? Uh, that's on that side and I want the yellow one on this side. Come on, Ving, stop playing games. Thank you. Yep, that's not in the right place. That's in the right place. You're all good with tea and ginger bread. <laughs> uh, I just finished a cup of tea just before I started streaming. And uh, after the stream, I'm either going to have donuts or some jalapeno peppers. I'm uh, tending towards the peppers, but uh, we shall see. Uh, gold on this side. Gold on that side, silver on here. Okay, this might be enough for you to actually see what the design is meant to look like. I originally intended to use more of a contrasting colour, but I rather like the um, this yellow colour. Hmm. Doesn't show up as well as I hoped it would. But the 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 idea is that the yellow uh, colour spir actually spirals around uh, the bracelet. Um, and it would probably have shown up better with uh, uh, with a, uh, a more contrasting colour, but the subtle one looks quite nice. So instead of you go yellow, 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 and it, it sort of just uh, rotates around around the bracelet. Um, they would, yes. They might have to be smaller. Um, I generally make them uh, for an, uh, an adult woman is generally about seven to seven and a half inches. So for um, younger children, it would need to be smaller. Um, but I don't actually uh, have any sort of um, measurement. You'd probably be you'd be guessing around about five inches, but I, I literally don't know the answer to that. It. Um, would be better to uh, to measure. Okay, so. But yes, the generally speaking, I, may, I would make them to measure. So, if literally, if you wanted one that's nine inches long, you can you can have one that's nine inches long. Um, Uh, 
that's on this side. That ring is deciding not to close properly. There we go. Ring, you are going to close properly, so you might as well do it now, rather than spend a lot of time messing around. There we go. I always, um, always find this fascinating in the way in which, uh, literally, these are these are rings. You know, it's just a piece of, ultimately, a piece of wire that's been wrapped around a cylinder to create a ring, and yet you get shapes like this is a sort of a rectangularish sort of shape. Um, but it's, you know, you've got this sort of uh, having bone almost effect that you see down, down the side there. Um, and um, I, I love how tac tac tactile, blimey, it's hard to say, tactile these are, especially some of the other, um, some, some of the other weaves that are, uh, are, uh, are used. They can be, they can feel extremely, t I can spend hours. Oh, I could spend hours just just playing with these <laughs> um, and the different weaves are some are more flexible than others this one for example is is a bit more flexible than than that one is um, but uh, yeah you can have um, great fun playing with them and um, and then things like the uh, the flexible ones of course here which which stretch a little bit and they they of course because they're the, the design of these, which is a Byzantine design, is is extremely bendable. Um, the flexible rings help a little bit, but even a standard Byzantine does tend to bend like that as well. And you can you can <laughs> play with them for ages. Uh, what gold on this side of it? Silver. 
I love the way the um, the patterns form in these as well. Like, I mean, this is a you know, as, a, as I mentioned, it's kind of a spiral weave. It probably won't end up looking like that unless you really study it carefully. But um, I still I still find that a, a, a nice sort of uh, pattern of uh, colours. Some of the um, some of the others, um, the Christmas candy, for example, you can sort of see the spiral a little bit better in this. Not as uh, it's not as pronounced as it could be, but um, uh, it shows up a little bit better on the smaller version of this with the smaller rings. This one uh, yeah, it uses a larger ring size. And I'm going to have a go, I think, at doing something like this. This is a three-colour bracelet. But if I do it in two colours, then the spiral should show up even even more. And I might try that um, either later tonight or tomorrow, probably. Because that's the other uh, style that I was going to try doing, a uh, this, this spiralling colour scheming. Because I love working in the in the tiny rings as well, but um, the unfortunate thing about working with the tiny rings, although they are they make really lovely dainty sort of bracelets, and I've probably got a section around here somewhere. Where's that? Um, All sorts of bits of jewellery around on my desk. Oh, there it is. Yeah, if you sort of, I sometimes, I, I occasionally will work with little tiny rings. Uh, these are little tiny rings, uh, and you get some love. I mean, this is um, this is called round mail, um, and it's actually. It's actually the same thing I'm doing here, but this is two-sided. This is, or this is four-sided. This is six-sided. Um, but in little tiny rings, this has got so far twice as many rings as that has, <laughs> um, and took just uh, took twice as long to make that length as as that's already made. So um, I don't tend to make the um, the small ones too often because they're uh, quite expensive. But if, uh, if anybody likes the little tiny ones, I am quite willing to make them. Uh, yeah, that's right. Nachmui, good evening and welcome. How is life? Well, hmm, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> Lady Zara there making a comment, which you may or may not have heard. Um, it could always be worse, I think, is the um, is the answer. You might wonder at the time how, but it can always be worse. And how are you, uh, Nachmui? Am I sure? Hmm, not really. But I'm making bracelets, I'm playing with jewellery, I'm playing with rings, chain mail. It's fun. Hopefully it's entertaining, or at least interesting for you guys to watch as well. Have I just? No, I haven't. Okay. Occasionally, uh, even on a simple weave like this, sometimes you accidentally interweave the rings in the wrong way. It's um, it's better to spot it as soon as you've done it, rather than sort of half an inch further down the bracelet when it becomes quite painful, frustrating, doesn't actually hurt, but frustrating to uh, to try and connect, uh, correct an error later on. Claire, good evening. 
Uh, unfortunately not at the moment, uh, Nachmui. Um, I mean, you are welcome to contribute towards that and take a look in the shop if you like and uh, and help that along, but... Uh, um, it's um, somewhat of a specialist form of jewellery. Box weave, indeed, um, Claire. Box weave, you've been reading that website, haven't you? <laughs> Um, actually, no, this is one of the ones that I mentioned last night, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, box weave, but with a particular pattern of coloured rings. Um, if you were to study this one, it doesn't show up fantastically well. Um, but the, uh, the, the yellow um, wraps around, well, I suppose the yellow and the silver, it's kind of like a helix that wraps around itself as, uh, as it comes down the length of the bracelet. Um, so uh, I was just experimenting. It's an idea I've had in my mind for a while. Usually um, with a box bracelet here, um, both sides are the same. So they're either sort of one colour or you'll have opposite sides the same colour. Um, and sometimes people will, will make uh, blocks of colour with it. I wanted to do something different, so spiralling it round was um, the thought that I had, uh, which looks, well, I think it looks quite nice. So you, I, I'm guessing you'll have seen things like Viper Berries and, uh, and Candy Cane and, uh, what was it, uh, there's loads of them. You'll have uh, you'll have been looking at all of those and um, just seeing um, how nice they look <laughs> and thinking about how to do them. That's when you start collecting ring sizes, you know, because you start going, mm, I need this size for that. And You will, um, if you if you haven't already, you'll quickly learn about aspect ratios. Dragon scale. Uh, yeah. I've got a, uh, I've got a dragon scale bracelet, which I uh, bracelet is a cuff actually, uh, rather than a bracelet. You just excuse me, I'll just go pick it up and I'll, uh, it's just over there, I'll just need to, I'll be back in a second. That's that's dragon scale. This is dragon scale cuff. She's uh, and it's it's quite a weighty um, a weighty bracelet. Is that um, dragon scale is quite easy to do once you get started. Once you've got three rows of dragon scale, then it becomes easy. The first three rows. Ah, uh, painful. <laughs> They're hard. Um, trying to get it. But once you get the first three rows in, then it becomes, it's, it really is sort of a lot easier then um, to do. And the um, the hardest thing is just remembering which of the rows, because each row, alternate rows are slightly different. Um, if you kind of look, there's like five on one row, four on the next five, and then four, for example. Um, or... There's an odd and even number basically, and uh, but once you once you get started, it's um, it's quite easy because it's just it's almost a one in one chain that you're doing as you go along. But uh, dragon scale, black and red, yeah, this one is um, deep rose and purple, uh, and actually um, that colour isn't available anymore, the uh, deep rose. I've got enough to make one more bracelet. 
you know, one more dragon scale cuff like this uh, but there's um, it takes a long while to do there's um, I forgotten how many hours is in this there's about 10 hours to make that uh, just because of the sheer quantity of rings that are used but um, yeah they do look uh, they do look really nice as uh, dragon scale but to be honest they kind of all look <laughs> they all look nice in their own way you know I like the um, the half Persian here uh, uh, four in one I like because it's nice and flat you get this sort of X rectangular X shaped and say X shaped because if I squeeze it it's it's like an X um, but it, it flattens out which I, I quite like the three in one sort of stands up and it's it's sort of v-shaped so you can have it either way up v pointing out or v pointing down they all have their um, interesting quirks and uh, and designs <laughs> uh, Claire says bless you thank you was the answer in case you didn't hear that uh, right I am going to put on a yellow on that side and So once you, once you start trying out some of those designs, you'll be you'll keep going and going and going. Okay, so it's yellow on this side. Hey, I remembered it's yellow. Um, it's still on this side. Oh, yes. Christmas, uh, Christmas colours. Yeah, the green and red. There you go. There's, there's the second one. So you've got half Persian, four in one, and that's a full Persian. Um, if you look on, on the website that Eddie linked to you, the uh, male artisans, if you look uh, on there they have um, You'll see, you'll see some things labelled as CGI tutorials or CGI. Um, I, on a personal note, I found those better to look at than than YouTube videos uh, because quite often, if somebody's doing it, the fingers are in the way or um, they're a little bit, you know, it's hard to see because they've used like, you know, I might use all silver rings, for example. So it makes it hard sometimes to see how they're weaving things together. But those are, with them being sort of single pictures, you can actually literally see where the, um, uh, where the rings are placed and, and work your way through it. So, but well, once you've got an idea, then the YouTube videos are fun to watch anyway. You prefer the half? Oh, the half push, yeah. I have a box full of things here, so where's that? Where's the other half version? There it is. So this one's a this one is also half version, but this is the three in one. So it's it's a more widely spaced. So it's it's a more dainty looking bracelet, even though it's quite um, this one's uh, bigger rings. But I don't know if you can see it's sort of. It's an it's like a an inverted V here. It sort of stands up in sort of that shape, and you can actually, of course, turn it over, and it has a completely different look because it's now pointed down. The V's pointed down, so you get um, one of the nice things about that is you get a different look from it. <laughs> well, they're in the shop. Uh, Claire, if, you've, uh, if you're interested. <laughs> Please, 
Um, right. Of course, that's one advantage Lady Zara has. She gets all the production samples. Can, uh, I can always do a, a small jewelry exhibition if you, if anybody wants to look and see some of the uh, some of the weaves and some of the other things uh, bracelets that have been done because I uh, have done some beadwork as well and uh, some cord cord weaving uh, known as uh, known as kumahimo uh, bracelets. Tell you one that you, I'm almost certain you will like, uh, Claire. You've probably seen it on the shop if you've looked, but um, <laughs> uh, you got a box. Yes, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, I'm kind of asking people the same question, but let let me show you this one. Let me really tempt you then. This is, uh, if I can say it, Swarovski, Swarovski crystal. Um, and as you can see, it, it's completely, um, completely covered, if you like, in Swarovski crystals. Uh, this one on the way, if you if people look on the website, this one on the on the Etsy site there, it's called Special Lady. <laughs> Just because, of course, that's who it was made for, a special lady. But this one, uh, th this is sort of green and and uh, clear. Uh, there is uh, red crystals, black crystals, a sort of a citrus, uh, I say citrine, a bluish sort of crystal. Um, and yellow, actually citrine's yellow isn't it, so there's a bluey one in the yellow crystal as well, um, so, but yeah, there you go, you can all be, this one, this one of course belongs to Lady Zara, being a production sample, but it, it was made specially as a present was this one. Uh, me. Uh, what is the price? Okay, um, they d depends on the size. Okay, because um, if it's shorter, it uses less crystals, and if it's longer, it uses more crystals. This particular one uh, is on, is in the shop for eighty UK pounds plus postage which would be an insured um, signed for postage so it's a little bit more expensive than uh, than second class postage but um, you've got uh, what is it there uh, 120 Sirovsky crystals in this particular bracelet is it 120 oh. no I can't count it's 90 I've got to do it right it's 90 90 Sirovsky crystals in there Uh, yes, Claire. Definitely. <laughs> well, with the price of the of your um, pieces, you should be able to afford some. Okay, Nakamui. I don't actually know the answer to that. I haven't looked up the exchange rates, but. Um, Thank you very much, Claire. That's uh, kind of you to do that. Right, Michelle. <laughs> and Moobot, of course, there was uh, just in time. Uh, black and red. Hmm. 
don't know. Never, never thought of black and red. I suppose he would do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to to buy us. Mm. Mm. It takes time, Claire. It takes time. It's um, sort of don't give up, don't give up too soon. <laughs> Right. Um, clearly, I've decided I'm going to continue this one to a bracelet length because I'm, uh, I quite like the uh, I quite like the colours, even if uh, it's not uh, if it even if the uh, spiral isn't showing up as much as I would have liked it to do. But I do like the colours, so I'm going to carry this one on. Yes, unfortunately, um, that's that happens, Claire. I know at the start it becomes a case of um, uh, make one to sell one to make one to sell one, and then you gradually you can make two, and then you start to build up slowly from there. I thought you said you'd um, sold about three last week. Yep, that's in the wrong place. Yeah, it's okay. Indeed. <laughs> Sometimes you do this and you just go, what on earth am I... I'm looking at that and thinking, what ring do I want now? And I mean, <laughs> there's only two colours and there's two different sizes, but it's it's got to be one of these two. And I'm looking at them going, yeah, um, uh, what do I do now? My brain just took a holiday. Unfortunately, it didn't tell me before it left. You, you're planning on a craft show? Well, going to a craft show or holding your own? I'm assuming you actually meant the former, going to a craft show. But that's not bad going. Um, it, it is the sort of thing that uh, attracts attention in craft shows. Uh, that wants to go on this side. Yeah, my brain has probably, I think, decided it's going to come back from wherever it went, so it looks like I'm making a bit more progress again. Oh yes, the international process. Uh, process. Well, you know, it could have been worse. going to one yeah anywhere um, in particular I, mean, I think you're you're south of Yorkshire so um, I probably wouldn't be uh, visiting but um, you never know you might be coming to one up um, further north yes that's right life is full of lessons some a little bit more painful than others
That ring has gone a weird shape, so we'll leave that one out. Northampton. It's a long time since I've been in the Northampton area. So, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be there. But uh, if you want to post a um, link to pictures of your stuff, uh, Claire, you're quite welcome to do so. Oh, oh! Of course, your friend does um, does the paper cutting as well, isn't it? side yellow on that okay. good evening Eddie as well if I didn't mention it a minute ago running out of these rings I'll have to get some more out so yeah yellow on this side so we're on that That's me just expressing a little bit of frustration to myself. Just occasionally, well, sometimes more than others, like now, um, I just can't get a ring to go where I want it to go, and it. Um, it goes everywhere but and it, it that does become a little bit frustrating no I still got in the wrong place there we go that kind of sounds like you ought to be one of those bishop jokes um, <laughs> and I've, um, we went up to um, a craft show in Harrogate at the Yorkshire Showground um, a while ago. And I was kind of walking around there looking at some of them and some of the, the stuff that's on sale. And, and I must admit, I was sort of looking at some of them thinking, how on earth do they actually make enough money to um, to cover the cost? Because uh, those shows aren't particularly cheap and uh, you just they didn't seem to have much interest <laughs> you know, when you go past them and there's nobody looking at the tables or anything. And it's kind of... Uh, and I'm looking at this piece of jewellery in my hand and going, what do I do now? And I put a, just go ahead and put a, a ring on would help. It doesn't matter which one I picked to start with. That's got twisted. Come on. That's it. Thank you.
<laughs> well, this one I think was a three-day show, so there's that, and then of course if you're not local, there'd be accommodation or camping costs and things, but. And despite the fact that the craft shows, um, some of the things I look at and think, you know, um, I'm almost certain that came from China, <laughs> fully made. <laughs> Some of them, yeah, definitely, you know, they're the, the made by the people that were there, but uh, uh, some of them, you know, mm. interestingly, actually, most of the ones that um, I would have been sceptical about, which was jewellery. Yeah, the bit that tips me off is when you go up to and you go, I know how long that takes to make. <laughs> and you're thinking, I don't know who they're paying, but they're not paying them very much. Um, Right, I shall need to get some more rings out in a moment. Oops, that one I don't want to use because it's a faulty ring. Okay, so... Yeah, well I make... Uh, uh, most of... well... I'm going to say craft fairs, the idea of the craft fair is okay handmade that tend uh, um, in my mind that tends to imply that the people that are doing it, it that are showing are the ones that have made it not you know handcrafted in uh, china and then imported into the uk so um hmm. it sort of um doesn't seem um, doesn't seem fair really And if nothing else, because if you do make it in the UK, you know, you just the prices just make it uh, difficult to, to to match what people import the things for um, from those areas. I don't know how many of these I'm going to need. And some more yellow. So I'm going to be opening rings for a little bit here. So 
Some small piles of coloured rings. So I'll use this fancy tool. <laughs> uh, it's almost a Tolkien reference, isn't it? Using a ring to open the rings. The one ring to rule them all. Have you made your Christmas tree, um, Eddie? Because uh, at one point you were going to make a tall chainmail Christmas tree. I haven't been on, uh, I say I haven't been around to watch a stream, so I don't know if you've actually gone ahead and done it yet. I think actually the last thing I saw was you making the Twitch logo, I think it was. Wanting to open them up. Yeah, I couldn't quite. You know, it was sort of. I was working my way to it, but I hadn't quite uh, quite got there yet. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? We've got lots lots of round rings, but only square to it. My um. My grandparents um, used to have a, a written sign uh, about two its and about the round variety of two its. And I, for many many years, I, I would I read the sign, and I just couldn't understand it. And it was it was only one day when I actually read it out loud. This is a good few many years ago, of course, but when I actually read it out loud and I actually understood the sign. And it, it's kind of amazing, it's sort of amazing to me how sometimes things like that you can um, you can read them as much as you like, but you've actually got to say it to understand the, uh, what they, you know, what it's actually saying. Yeah, well, Christmas does that anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> Christmas is great at emptying bank accounts. Uh, I'm out of practice at doing this. This is I should have had this lot done in an hour. So far, it's taken me... Uh, an hour and 15 minutes and I'm not finished. Mind you, I was going to say, talking with you guys is, um, does mean it. I slow down a little bit, but um, not too much. Probably haven't got enough of these out to complete a bracelet either, but uh, we'll uh, we'll get a bit further. Yeah, it was quite, um, 
it wasn't last night, the night before, something like that. Um, I was kind of, you know, I was really surprised at just how long it took me. I just, I just did a a Byzantine um, stretchy and uh, two hours to do that. And it's what on earth am I uh, doing? Yeah, and, and I couldn't close, uh, you know, that first night, I couldn't close the ring properly for the life of me. I kept uh, kept having to do it again and again and again. And, uh, you soon pick it back up again, but um, I'm still not picking up, picked up on the speed just yet. Mind you, I'm also not trying to, uh, to rush either, so... Quality over speed. So you're still streaming over the Christmas break, Eddie? Is it going to be uh, games? What did I suggest? I can't remember. <laughs> How long did it take? And yeah, I probably had an advantage. I think what I did is work out how long I thought it would take me to do. This week, and uh, I'm on holiday for next. So. Around 13 hours, yeah. So what were the uh, what were the ranges of guesses? Were people sort of thinking in sort of uh, one to two hour range, or were they um, going um, over? Because a lot of people that I I ever talked to about um, you know ch chainmail stuff like um, like the bracelets and things, a lot of people tend to underestimate. They'll look at it and go, and that must be only like ten minutes to make a you know. A, a bracelet or something like that and um, I mean he, he, it still surprises me sometimes just because of um, what was I making I made something yesterday was it yesterday what did I make do I art oh yes the heart that was right yeah thank you <laughs> ladies out <laughs> reminding me what I was making which is on here somewhere and uh, yeah and I, I really surprised myself just how how long that sorry the heart there no uh, that we'll get there yeah just something that small or what is apparently that small uh, took over two hours to do and yet um, when when I actually count them, and I haven't, but when I actually counted the rings, and sort of there's about 150 rings in there, it kind of didn't, didn't surprise me, but um, it just. Hmm. Desk and passing, yeah. 
Uh, I, I lose track of days. Days and weeks. It's kind of, you know, like the, this stuff at work and uh, I've been... You know, it was almost three weeks I wasn't streaming and it, it just seemed to go really quickly. Um, and yet, you know, so looking back and going, is it really three weeks I haven't been streaming? But then I look back and go, uh, you know, was that... That three weeks seemed like six months, you know, uh, work-wise. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> I can now understand that, Eddie. <laughs> oh, dear. Mm. I mean, there's, uh, with that, you know, obviously the, the bigger rings are a little bit... Um, a little bit quicker, but uh, just because of the size. But um, in that particular case, it, it, I guess it wouldn't really have made uh, much difference what size the rings were because it was the shape that I was after, and uh, it had to be uh, had to be that number of rings, no matter what the size was. But and welcome back, uh, Claire. Yeah, it's really difficult to illustrate the value, isn't it, um, Eddie? You know, to sort of, you know, it's almost like saying you do, you know, you do realise this took seven hours or, or whatever it is to um, to do and sort of illustrate what the value of it actually is. Uh, okay, Claire. So now, now you've got some money to spend on um, on the jewellery. <laughs> And I am only joking, by the way. Yeah, it's um, I, I can I can understand that, Claire. I mean, I because I do yes, you know, so I do model making and and uh, things like for the airbrushing. I cut cut masks. Um, I I kind of understand how much effort and time and it takes to actually sort of cut uh, what is ostensibly even a simple shape, and uh, I can understand the effort that goes into it and the time. But um, yeah, I can see a lot of people saying exactly uh, exactly that. And of course, if they've come across things out of China where they're, they're stamped with a you know a big uh, a, a big cook, cookie cutter, basically, then um, you know they don't they don't understand the value. <laughs> well, I don't know, uh, AD. It's um, it's 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 kind of one way of which uh, you know um, you could get some jewelry that you liked, but yeah, still um, still profit from it, so to speak. <laughs> It's, it, I mean, it's, it, it's a bit like me doing doing the same thing because uh, that's this one um, is made out of sterling silver. Uh, so the sterling silver rings is, is this. It, it wants a good clean, but um, you know, uh, I, 
can't I can't sell those um, because of the basically because of the law. Uh, but uh, you know, it's it's I can make them for myself or or as presents for things like that. So you know, <laughs> it's one way to uh, um, to get uh, the best of both worlds, so to speak. So that was a that was a silver ring. So I want a gold ring. Cot tankist, fifty one. Thank you very much for the follow. That's kind of you. Why can't I sell it? Um, okay, I I can sell it, but I can't sell it as sterling silver. Um, what I would have to do is is sell it as silver coloured, or silver metal, um, or silver tone. I, I legally cannot describe it as sterling silver. Um, the reason being is it weighs it weighs more than 5.7 grams, and anything a finished article, a finished sterling silver article weighing more than 5.7 grams has to be hallmarked it is illegal to sell it without a hallmark you can actually have a substantial fine and it's a criminal offense um, so it can't there is um, you potentially can have a prison sentence as well uh, as as the as well as a substantial fine um, and um, basically it's expensive to hallmark um, uh, to hallmark a single piece on its own is £20. So you put the price of the piece up by £20 just to have it hallmarked, uh, which is uh, which is quite pricey. So um, that's essentially why I can't sell it because um, I mean, if you, it, it it would almost be a case of you would have to trust that just because I said it's made out of sterling silver it actually is because the whole mark is there to guarantee that it is um, and uh, if, if there was somebody unscrupulous they could say this is you know made out of sterling silver but it's not whole mark you buy it and it turns out to be something else so um, that's um, that's the reason behind it yeah that's right I, I mean, it, it's it's actually kind of weird because what you you might think then is how do the you know, jewelers and things do it? But um, what what it actually is is um, hallmarking. Um, it can only be done in the UK in four different centres, and you are generally speaking you're a customer of one of them. Um, but it, the the pricing is such that it's it's effectively like twenty pound per package. And then the whole marking is on top of that. So if your package contains one item, it's twenty pound. If it contains a thousand items, it's twenty pound plus a tiny bit. And that's how the jewelers uh, do it. They send uh, for whole marking. They'll send, you know, fifty, a hundred pieces at the same time, so they could spread the cost out. I can't do that. And unfortunately, if you look on places like eBay or even on the internet, you'll see a lot of places that will that are selling um, sterling silver. What well, they say is sterling silver, um, but um, almost certainly isn't hallmarked because one of the other things you have to do if you're selling um, sterling silver is the hallmark is personal to yourself, as what they call the sponsor. Um, and as part of the rules and regulations of having the hallmark, you have to display prominently certain uh, signs, if you like, that explain the hallmark and who you are and things like that. And if you're selling them online, you have to put that information online. 
So if you don't see it in the shop, uh, that's selling sterling silver, essentially they're probably selling it illegally. And I kind of don't really want to um, fall foul of the uh, the law. I say it's um, it's a criminal offence, not a civil offence. So it's a police record. Where do I buy my jump rings? From a shop. Yeah, that's right. The 925 means absolutely nothing at all. You you can put 925 on anything you like. It does does not mean anything. Um, while sterling silver is 925 parts per thousand of silver, um, they and and you know people think that saying seeing that on something means that it actually has no meaning at all. It's not legally enforceable or anything. So, um, yeah, just um, that is, as Eddie points out, is something that uh, you sometimes need to watch out for. Okay, so. Right, I'm just going to do another set of these rings, and we're coming up to 10 o'clock, so. Um, I've got some jalapeno peppers downstairs, which are uh, I'm going to have uh, after this stream. So they're kind of calling. So I will just uh, put another round of uh, rings in place, and then we will uh, call it a night. Well, I'll call it a bracelet, but it's not complete. <laughs> Um. I'll uh, I'll drop you a Twitch message, uh, Claire. Once I've got my peppers. Okay, one more ring just to hold these two in place. Just makes it. Let's pick a silver one. Nope, I missed. You can tell it's the last ring, can't you? Because it, it, this is going to be the most awkward one to put in of the lot. There we go. Okay, so now we've got a nice... Uh, Short leads. So let's see how let's see how much out of practice I have been. So that's what it uh, looks like. Yeah, three inches in an hour and a half ish. So <laughs> oh, I'm out of practice. It needs to be seven inch before it's a bracelet length, because then the clasp pad's about half an inch. Uh. Mm. They are really bad uh, rings then, uh, Claire. If uh, if that's happening, I mean, there's... some colours are a little bit more sensitive than others, but essentially, you know, I'm, you 
see me I'm picking them up with pliers and all sorts and they um, the colors are not uh, wandering um, and it, well and if they're aluminium anodized they've been really poorly anodized if the color is coming off that easily it happens sometimes but okay so that's um, that's a bit I'll finish this tomorrow night and I will finish it tomorrow night So this is a box chain, if you haven't seen it before. I guess it's called a box chain because it's four-sided. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting chain, um, uh, depending on how you wear it, because you put a twist in it as like that, as I'm sort of doing there. So if you wear it with a, with a, with a twist in it, you get a slightly different look. Um, it, it won't twist a great deal it starts to kink but um, you can put a twist in it to wear it which makes it an interesting look and this um, this one is uh, the silver and yellow spiral around each other in this uh, as I've done it here I might have to try that um, see if I can do the same thing with uh, with round mail perhaps but anyway there we go uh, that's it for tonight thank you everybody for watching it has been fun having you around in chat and talking whilst I experiment with color I will remind anybody who's watching that hasn't checked out the shop of course there's a shop there it's Etsy Moobot's been dropping it into uh, Chad as well and uh, there's a there's, uh, I think there's three bracelets available on um, uh, eBay if somebody wants one now um, the uh, the other ones are made to order to specific length and colors so um, there's you know if you want to pick one up without waiting there's, uh, there's some available on eBay and um, this one may end up there or this may go to ladies hour we shall see um, thank you everybody if you would like to catch me on my next stream then I, of course, will recommend you follow this. And then uh, Twitter. No, I keep doing that wrong. Twitch will tell you when I go live. If you follow me on Twitter, it also will tell you when I go live because a tweet goes out when I go live and uh, uh, from time to time a couple of other things about jewellery or the shop. Um, but not a great deal. I'm not a prolific tweeter. If you just want to try and catch me, hopefully... I'll be on tomorrow night from about 8 p.m. UK time, 20 hundred hours GMT, or about two hours ago. It was a bit late tonight, but about two hours ago, generally around 8 p.m. Uh, UK time is when I will stream for for a couple of hours. But as, as I say, unfortunately, it's a little bit variable at the moment because of uh, how busy it is at work. Thank you. Hope I'll see you again in the future, and uh, have a good evening and uh, enjoy watching the Twitch for the rest of the evening or whatever you're going to do. Bye for now.